people that uh, have the opportunity to see this Zoom video, Carl Bailey. He's a a uh, citizen or, or state citizen of Delaware, the state that our current president Biden comes from. And he has an interesting story about what's going on in that state. And it might also be going on in our state. Uh, wh why don't you go ahead and start with some of the mortgage issues or some of the political issues that you see forth, uh, Carl? Okay. Um, my name is Carl. Uh, I appreciate you having me here, Aaron because no this problem. is a great opportunity. Um, what happened with us is that at one point in time, we, went, we had three lots that were side by side. Out of those three lots, we took and got a, we got a line of credit on the rear lot. We had, uh, we had a constable or sheriff file fraudulent documents inside of their office, making claims that they took and they gave us a notice that there was a foreclosure being put in place. So it, so that never happened. That was fraudulent from the one, from the first. Okay. And you'll see that on our YouTube, uh, on one of our on our YouTube clip, you'll see where we're actually we're actually serving the sheriff's department department and the constable's office our document because of what's going on in their fraudulent practices that they're engaging with us, right? That was one. Secondly, we have this, this mortgage, if you look at the recorder of deeds, according to the record of the recorder deed, this is with Michael E. Uh, Kawazicki. In his office, when we looked up on the recorder of deeds, it shows that when our line of credit was actually so-called, and you can't believe dates because they move dates and they change documents a lot, but according to their filings, right, right. they show that the mortgage that was signed, it shows, and, I, and that's posted on your the webpage as well, you'll see where the actual lender, um, Stephen Allen Johnson, he literally crossed out the address, changed it, initialed it by himself, and where the description of the properties go, blanked it out, period. So wow. he did he did he uh did he say did he write in your name and initial it as if it was you doing it or himself? No, he altered and he altered the document where we had a we secured a line of credit on a rear small property. Yeah, he, he crossed that parcel number out and right. changed the address. Initial okay. did himself, so he changed the document. He right, right. He yeah, he wrote his initials and where. The description of the property was at because when he changed it, the parcel number, it's, it's larger than the smaller property. It couldn't fit in there, so they just simply left it blank. Right. When I when I sent the court uh, um, a document informing them that this doesn't even meet the standard of a contract, so it could never be held. First of all, he took and voided out the contract, and then law anytime there's a change to the instrument or the document without the consent of the shorter, it voids the contract. So his very day that he filed it back in 2005, we're going to come all the way up into the teens dealing with this. Right. Back in 2005, he committed fraud. And on the bottom of the document, it says subject to penalty of perjury under the law. The very first document shows perjury. Not only does it show perjury, that it shows that the recorder of deeds, Michael E. Kawazicki, yeah. Would, would willingly forward a poisonous document and fax it and email it to different folks, which means this right here is wire fraud in addition to that, not only forgery. You yeah. understand? Oh, I totally. I'm, I used to do mortgages, so I 100% understand what you're talking yeah. about. And, you know, a, a common person like myself would at least get fired, you know, if I was caught doing that, let alone uh, they would, uh, you know, certain circumstances I would be prosecuted according yes. to you know my my superiors there so i totally see the fraudulent action you know that you're talking about now um what is the relevance of that how what happened with okay. that document? i'm going to bring you forward this is a movie <laughs> but we're yeah. going to bring you forward it right sometime i believe this may have been around in 217 or uh, 2017 the heat is picking up where they we have a woman by the name of janet z chalk and Janet Z. Charlton is a, well, first we went to take and file for bankruptcy. Me and my wife, we were, we were attempting to file for bankruptcy to stop this sale, this fraudulent sale, so that we could have someone look into it and prove that this is fraud from the day one. The mortgage never existed, that you, you share falsified documents and put them into circulation, right? Right. 
when we went when we went to do that and we had we had um lawful help filing out that document the same parties who filed who helped us fill out our bankruptcy he has done dozens of this they kept blocking my file they would not permit it to take and go through okay one day when we go to court one day when we go to the bankruptcy court because they're sending us back they're trying to get us to claim that our assets are debt versus assets you know what i mean right. all of these little maneuvering things right so when we go back into the court the guy who handles the bankruptcy court there's a lady who shows up out of nowhere. There's about 20, I'm painting the, I'm painting the picture. There's about 20 other people in the back uh, bankruptcy court. There's a lady that comes in and she takes over the process. Mm. While she's taking over the process, the fellow who's, who's normally doing the process, he looks very intimidated by her presence. Okay. She's asking me and my wife all of these questions as she's salivating over her property. Now, there's over 20 other people in the room, man, right? But yeah, she, comes with, she comes with aerial photos of our property, mm -hmm. just our property, salivating. This is your prop. This is yours. Like, this is going to be an easy take. Yeah. So she starts asking all of these questions, right? So when she's asking these questions and my wife is answering them, I, I nudge her and I said, don't answer any more questions. What is your name? She would not give us a, her name. Mm, wow. She wouldn't she wouldn't give her give, give us her name and she wouldn't be permitted for it to be heard on the on the recording. Wow. And she took over the meeting, right? Very interesting. Now, did you ever figure out who she was and what her name was? No, I have not. Okay. But but you're gonna see the power of who this woman must be because he was he was you could tell that that was authority over him by far. Okay. He had to go with the program, right? Right. So so while we're there and they're still blocking us and we're trying to stop this sale because they're really trying to push a sale so they can flush our property down the, ra um, the rabbit hole so you can't try to get it back, right? Try mm. to buy it, right? Because we're falling, we're falling for different type of falling to um, stay the sale and all of that stuff. We're following lawful documents, which which are which which are lawful, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So by them blocking our us being able to have um to get this this bankruptcy part of the bankruptcy would be is you would issue the form if the forms fit they go through a check with the application if it fits then what you'll do is in about two or three weeks you might get a call back and and then you'll go in and you'll go through mediation and and making sure that whatever plans out on that bankruptcy is in properly in place but what what they kept rejecting us and the guy that was sitting there who normally handles it he says, you see the lady over there? It was a lady who was representing a couple people in bankruptcy court. Yeah. He says, he says, I can't recommend her to you, but she's here a lot and she does a lot of work. Well, our hands are tied because you guys are lawfully, criminally blocking, uh, not lawfully, criminally blocking us from being able to enter into a bankruptcy when the, when the documentation is proper, right? So we are forced to go with that. So as we talk with her, that's our way out. We tell, we tell her, this is a private conversation. What our interest is, is we're interested in you filing for the bankruptcy. And after you file for this bankruptcy, this is going to give us enough time to take and push forward this, uh, our, uh, to reverse this judgment that was fraudulently gained on a mortgage that never existed but was created by public officials. Right. right? She must have spoke with this same lady. That why we were out on a trip with my, my daughter did a lot of sports. So we're out, of, we would go out of town and support her, her sports and then come back in town quite frequently, right? right. While we're out of town and we're talking with her, she calls us up and, and tries to rush us into signing off on this thing. And we looked at it and we said, you know what? What, what they were trying to do with this bankruptcy filing is she, by her dealing with this person, they tried to come back to us and have us sign. Um, for a refi, right, on a property, right? But the refi is this. Remember I said there was three properties? Yeah. Smaller one in the back. She wanted us to sign a document consenting that there was a there was a mortgage that existed that was three properties. They didn't oh. have that. So they're okay. trying to falsify it. You understand? Right. Because right. our because because this line of credit, when it wasn't conveyed, it was never it was never conveyed. Um to the SEC, not to mention that Countrywide Lending did not have the power to take and sell the mortgage. They, did, um, they didn't have a problem to sell it. They split the mortgage from the note. And now, let's be clear. Because I'm talking on this ground, I'm still telling you that this thing that they filed doesn't exist. 
Right. But even with an entity that doesn't exist, it still fails to meet standards. Yeah. So, yeah, so which, so which and, and it still and it still jeopardizes your current housing circumstance. Yes. So yeah, I understand the relevance. So, so go, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you having dialogue with me, right? Yeah. Well, with this, what happened was is this woman on her own went back and she filed this after we told her not to file it. Okay. We had to go back to court to get to have that repeal a document that we told her not to sign. Right. Because they needed a document to try to validate that at one point in time there was a mortgage for three properties because they kept changing it. And what, see, in, in the state of Delaware, when we had that line of credit, then when he changed the address, what he did is it went to Texas. Mm. So that they can get a consignment, right? To, that's um, to try to validate the lie. They needed new documents because they had to fill in the blanks that was raggedy on the original uh, consignment that was in recorder B. So when it goes back to Texas, it shows that they they made a stable consignment that was based on fraud. And that one says subject to penalty of perjury. So it's perjury document from the original. And that one changed twice in Delaware. Then it went from Texas to California. When it goes to California, this consignment, now that consignment says that someone in California must have did their homework and realized that that was the wrong property. So they turned it back to the original property. Right. property and I'm using 132 as the last numbers of the long parcel number, right? Yeah. They changed it back to then. By the time it gets back, then it comes back to Delaware. When it gets to Delaware, it becomes three properties. It becomes 132, 133, and 165, and it doesn't even have a history of that at all. Right, right. Any of them. It's all created by a woman who's pushing the issue, Janice E. Chalk, who's supposed to be the attorney working in behalf of a lender. Now, let's what's her, let's, name, what's her name again? Janet Z. Chalk. Okay. Right? Would you be would it be possible for you to spell that last name? C-H-A-R-L-T-Z-O-N. I knew you would know the spelling. Uh -huh. now, <laughs> I said now. I knew you would know the spelling. <laughs> I'm now, sure you didn't looked her all up on the internet and everything. So, oh, yeah, yeah. Not only that, here she here's a woman who's filing in the court in behalf of a lender. Now, all of that's fraud. Yeah. But here she is filing it, giving addresses that she do not operate out of. When I questioned her having, when I questioned and showed her. I, from my affidavit of facts that she was not an attorney, she bailed out. But oh, our, wow! So you yeah. caught her uh, practicing law with uh, without a license, without being a, a bar, member of the bar. Yeah, and, and engaging in multiple courts. She, she's going to different courtrooms, presenting Ooh. herself when the addresses that she gives are fake, fictitious addresses. When I go to those locations, they tell me very poorly about questions. She's not here. Right. So, so when you had to do a proof of service, you have to track down a person who you can't even serve. Oh, wow. OK. And she's she, I mean, she might just be like a fraudulent, like uh, she is. con person. She, she is. And not only that, on one of my documents, I asked her to show proof that she was even working for the lender. Couldn't show it. Wow. OK. You understand? Now, yeah. Yeah. Keep going, because there's questions I want to ask, but I want to get your story out. Okay. And then, you know, and so that it'll get out because we're going in Evanston, we're going through a situation where you may have seen on the news, the reparations bill is being uh, filtered through our hard work from one of our star older persons. Her name is Robin, uh, um, Robin Bruce Simmons. Uh -huh. And uh, she's done some good work with a good heart, but I think that she's lacking a level of sophistication Right. to where to make it relevant to the world especially black folks uh, and it's connected to mortgages right wow. so your story is probably a, a peanut in that whole thing and i want to get it out there so go ahead and finish your story so that we uh, not finish it but continue it because it ain't right. finished yet uh right. and i apologize for interrupting you go oh, ahead oh, i appreciate you talking with me and having dialogue yeah, um, Brother Aaron, what, what I'm looking at here mm -hmm. is that when, when I had a securitization um, analysis done on my property, yeah, it shows that, um, what's that, Michael A. Johnson 
Stephen, I'm sorry, Stephen, Stephen A. Johnson, who was the lender of Countrywide Lending. You remember they got they got sued for over $853 million. Yeah. Corruption, right, back in the day. Right. Well, he, what most people don't know, he was the vice president of lending. Mm -hmm. Michael A. Stephen moved to the right and he became the vice president of lending of Bank of America. Okay. And he went to Bank of America as vice president. What's happening is when we do a, a securitization analysis on my property, even though it's the, the fake one, right? Yeah. When we do a securitization on there, you can see that he never, re and, and, and we petitioned that in the court, that it was never even sent that was never even reported to the SEC during their bankruptcy. So he put it in his left pocket, went over to Bank of America and started to collect on things that was hidden from the shareholders, the shorters, as well as the, the federal government. Wow. Um, so what do you mean, what do you mean when you say collect? Does he personally, he's personally putting it in or is he bringing it to Bank of America so that his, his uh, package looks bigger? So, so there's a, so there's a, see, nobody wants to say on, see, he's not going to say that he has two choices, Aaron. He has a choice to say that that was a dirty mortgage from the, it was a dirty, um, it was a crime when he took and falsified that document in the first place. And because it was a crime, he took it and he threw it in the trash. Okay. And, and then people here in the state of Delaware, your legal, your, your attorneys and stuff have been using the recorder of deeds like a candy store. Yeah. And they're going through pillaging through mortgages. Mm -hmm. And it's no harm, no foul, no see. No see, no evil, no hear, no evil. Okay. Now, how they make interact with each other behind the, the closed doors, I do not know. It could be a collection friendly on anyone who goes out and, and goes out of mortgages that are not even reported to the SEC. Okay, so so um, usually you would follow the money, right? And yes. I know that property ownership is the, is one of the quickest ways, if not the quickest way, to become wealthy. Yes. And what it sounds like they're doing, and I'm gonna quickly summarize somewhat so that we could go forward, is they're stealing property from people who lack the attention um, details, like uh, not like you. Mm -hmm. And then once they once they have them. In the bank and then ready to be foreclosed on, what's happening next? That's my question to you because what you've kind of laid out is that they're changing deeds and 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 stealing from people based on probably from 08 or one of those times when they were putting people in bad mortgages anyway. Yes. Uh -huh. And so once those deeds start coming to fruition. Right. There are people that just walked away from their properties. Well, and that's yeah. how, and that we'll see, but you had someone like Janice E. Chalk, her name popped up with quite a few people here that I know. Right. So <laughs> what is, so right. what, whose name is she, she, is she shifting them to a bank that she's friendly with so she could go buy them later? Or is she shifting them into her name off the top? Yeah. Well, it, it's a little bit of, it's a little bit of mystery in that area. Okay. She's filing in behalf, you know what I mean? So okay. she's collecting on someone who's never had the mortgage in the first place. And when you challenge her, his, her having, um, that she was appointed, see, while we, while we were doing some of our investigations, right? Yeah. We were finding people who were collecting on mortgages in behalf mm -hmm. of a lender. Yeah. And that lender has filed in the court judgments against them. Okay, let me. Uh, that's a little confusing. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. So pe people who are collecting a, a for the bank or the more the bank, the mortgage holder, the bank. Yes. The bank is suing them now. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. The, you can see that there were judgments in the courts filing against them where they are not taking their phone calls, they're not receiving their message, uh, their mail. They mm -hmm. were doing, so so here you are. You're working for a lender, but yeah. that very lender is going after you. And it's filed in the courthouse. Well, it has to be a reason, right? Are they not yes. sending? Are not? Are they not forwarding the the mortgage payments to the bank? Is that why the bank is suing them? What What's the story there? There's a hole in that. Right. Yeah. No. No idea. All, all you okay. can see is doing the thing that they have. There's a judgment from so and so lender against so and so, and they may have a, a small summary, not receiving mail, or you know, no addresses, and it, it gets it becomes a very big wet. Okay, okay. 
Now, right. uh, that's interesting. That's very, very, very interesting because now there nobody's responsible for the property. It's a feeding frenzy. Yes, it's it frenzy becomes here, a, right? It's like a an institution that becomes a straw buyer. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And right. so, but like we know, nine tenths of nine tenths of the law is is nine tenths of possession is the law. So while exactly. you're still sitting in your house, if nobody has actual physical, you know, documented rights to the house, then the people living in the house own the house per the law or per, you know, that gray area of the law. Okay. Is that where you guys are sitting well, right we now? Yeah, yeah, and I'm oh, glad yeah. you made that comment. We didn't That's leave. We, got. we were forced out. Right. I can't hear you. I said we didn't leave. We were forced out of right. our of our I'm going to so, say so the uh the sheriffs came and and gave oh, them no, even no, the sheriff never came. But even before, um, there was there's pictures also on the website of the vandalism. You know the bullets in the, the bullet holes in the walls. The okay, yeah. Tell us. Tell okay. So that's it, something that I've heard talked to you personally about, but it hasn't been recorded, especially not on my uh, thing. So what are some of the levels of intimidation? And how did you get to the point where they were trying to intimidate you? I know you said they tried to, well, they killed your dog. I'm not sure about how they uh, did that, but I know white people gonna have a problem with them killing your dog. Exactly. So go ahead and say that, you know, and put that yeah. out there. Well, what we, what we were looking at, Brother Aaron, is we were talking about the legality. So on the legality stuff, we have case law and precedents to overturn a fraudulent judgment for them to look into it. We yeah. were stopped by the attorney from reading it, right? Now when, now, when we're going into courtrooms, every time we would go into a courtroom, the judge would switch for our case, right? Okay. The would switch for our case. The last case we went into, and we, uh, to, to protest this right here, what happened was, is the judge argued from the bench in behalf of the respondent, awarded the respondent to judgment, and the respondent wasn't even in court. Mm, okay. So in other words, it was supposed to be thrown out. Yes. If the respondent wasn't there and yes. they had no representation, lawyer, nothing. She left. She left. So now it's so the woman, Janice E. Charlton, who was, I believe, hired to move this thing forward. Once I started sending her documents, showing her that she, she doesn't have a delegation of authority or charter. She is not an attorney. Yeah. She was processing documents through multiple courts throughout the state that were fraudulent. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that, and, and it was being received and entertained by multiple so-called judges, right? Uh -huh. She left. She would. She didn't want to be she a part of it. She got so, out of the court, so it became live with the court. The court, an invisible entity in the court, started to move it forward. Wow. Now, um, yeah. are you ready to talk about that invisible entity? Who you think it might be, or you still got more to go before? Well, we I, I could, well one thing I could hold on. Let me see. One, because you never did talk about any of the other acts of intimidation besides the ones okay. in That's court. That. Besides the ones in court, you mentioned that they shot at your house or shot at you uh, physically. The police kept harassing you tell us more about those yeah. uh i remember you telling me about that yeah one happened what what happened was one day we went to a track meet by the time we come back home someone went into one of my barns and took out over seventy five thousand dollars worth of our stuff we called the, we called uh the state police they came out an asian guy came out right and mm -hmm. what he did is he seen where they did all what they done. He told us, me and my family to make up a list best we could on the items that were stolen. A lot of items, right? So in, 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 um, in our process of doing that, we're trying to get back with this officer, right? We're never getting a return call or anything. We don't quite understand why. But yeah. we're not getting a call back from him, how right? How you doing, ma'am? Oh, by the way, this oh, right here is my wife. Hello, hello, how you doing? Yeah. I'm Aaron. I'm from uh, Evanston Magazine in, in the Chicago area. Uh -huh. uh, so I appreciate y'all talking to me about this. Um, you're going through some things. Yes. So, so Brother Aaron, um, what happened was is he would never get back in touch with us. So okay. then another night comes in and we have, um, we come in, we realize that um, there's a bullet up inside the house, inside of my house, in the kitchen area, that's in the wall. It, and these people done shot it. Now, they came and shot up my house on several occasions. This is not one shooting incident. In some instances, they came in and they shot out all of my security cameras as well as my security lighting. 
I'm wow. back in the woods. So if you come, if, if I could see you the way my place was constructed, that you're trespassing. Mm. And you cannot see your hand in the dark in front of your face. Because it's um, literally, it's a, a, a half a mile driveway. So you got the, the secondary roads, not is, 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 is a four miles from the main road, but the secondary road. And we come off of that road and it comes around and opens up to our property, mm -hmm. which is our road. So it's only, you can only do one car to get in yeah. and one car to get out. But once you now, open up, you can turn around here. Now, how many acres is this again? We had 13, uh, roughly 13 and a quarter acres combining the three. Okay. Right. And have you ever had the property uh, looked at for like valuable minerals or oil or anything like that? Well, I, I know we sit on top of an aqua flow. Anywhere you dig. You what is it? An aqua flow. We sit on an okay, aqua flow. Water. But we never, we've never looked at minerals or anything like that. We, we never okay. had, had considered that, right? Yeah, I but, totally uh, understand because from all the stuff that we didn't talk even talked about at this point, it, it sounds like it's something extra. You know, they're not just getting wood from that property. If they're chasing it, there's something in there that's a little bit more, you know, suspicious uh, to me. That my suspicion is up to why these people are are trying to take your property away from you. Uh, besides the fact that they just it just sounds like there's a NCT. large level conspiracy. I, I wish I had a picture. I wish I had a picture of my property. It's you on your website. Understand. It's on the website. That's what, that's what we have for. Uh, yeah. Well, you can always do. You can do. Um, you Google can see it from Earth. Google Maps or Google Earth. That's right. what it's called. Google Earth. Google, right? But yeah. Um, so when this this Asian guy wouldn't get back, because we called once again. Now we have two people come out, right? Yeah. This guy, when he's coming out, he's he's going to the antics. Now this time, someone spray painted up on my house. I had big box fans because I had a, a construction company. They yeah. spray painted all up on my truck saying "Keep out." Not mind me, I'm still here, right? Yeah. My trash cans, my big thing. Um, uh, they spray painted up my house and everything, right? Not to mention, I'm watching my security system go down, right? When I call, he agrees with everything that he's saying. That the lead cop, right? I guess he may be in a corporal, right? What What do you What do, you said he agrees with? So you got videotape. Yes, uh, you got is. videotape of the people spray painting your house. No, I got videotape of the results of it and me talking to a police officer who's pretending that he's not seeing any of this. Well, what happened to the video cameras during the time that they were spray painting? They shot the video camera out. All of that out. was taken. All of that okay. was taken. Oh, they stole them. Yeah, all of that was taken. They were they, they were shot the video. They shot the video. No, they shot talking about footage of it. I know what you're saying. He's talking about he shot the cameras out. Yeah, the cameras were shot out, but so was the recording device. That's gone. Okay. And right. so when you got, let me let me be clear about this. So when you got back home, mm -hmm. you got back home from wherever you was at, you mm -hmm. saw, oh, they spray painted my stuff. Then you were like, let me go look at the cameras to see who it is. Now you discover that your cameras are all shot out. Mm -hmm. And right. then you also discover that the box that was previously recording is shot up. Is that well, true? No, 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 no. Just, just the camera heads. The recording, the recording, the recording went out. You could see where the wires were cut on on some of the cameras. You could see somebody cutting them. Well, no, you can't see anybody cutting. We had no recordings at all. Why? Why is that? Because it, because it goes our, against our logic. Tape, our tape, no, our tape was limited. We had an old one of the older VCR type of camera systems. Okay. That was limited. So we couldn't catch that, but we did take some, we did take our recording with the police officers coming out, okay. denying us the police report. Okay. So we, so are you, are you okay with that? Well, I'm, I mean, I'm investigating. I'm asking the questions that would come okay. up when people are listening to this and or, you know, maybe it's could possibly help you when, you know, you know, whenever somebody gets to questioning you because right. Um, you know, like recordings only work one way, right? Even if you cut the wire or you bust the uh bust the camera out, they gonna it's gonna record you doing that most of the right. time, right? Unless yeah. you do it from the side and crack it open. That may, but that indicates somebody seriously on the inside right. was trying to help them, right? But our recording was like a forty-eight hour recording. Yeah, so if it recorded would flip back the other way. Yeah. In that time, we are going. We're out of the state for almost what three days at the meeting. Yeah, my, my daughter, my other daughter, was uh, is that was at a university and she was on a track team. 
Yeah. So we Y'all went left. to every single meet because we were part coaches of them of her team. So gotcha. we were going to every meet almost yeah. you know every on the weekend. Understandable. Yeah. And so by the time y'all got back, the videotape was only recording what whatever was left of the broken cameras, yes. or they cut the wire so that the electricity wasn't working towards it. Yeah. One, so you got recordings that are no good. Right. Now, let's fast forward to where you were saying that you were talking to somebody, the right. somebody about the police. Yeah. What is on, that? On, yeah, on the on our YouTube, you'll see a clip where I'm talking to, it's called Officer Lordage Racketeering, L-O-R-D-I-T-C-H Racketeering. When you look at that, you'll see where, when I'm, I'm giving him, I'm telling him everything that's going on. We don't have, we come home one day, it's a couple days before Christmas, right? Mm -hmm. It's freezing outside. We don't have any heat or anything. And found out that someone turned off our power. Mm. Somehow. So we're looking for it. Now, the property itself, Aaron, I built that property from the ground up. So the underground wiring to the house, everything, I, I, I did that, right? So I'm looking for it, but we called him out. He's pretending as he's looking for the, the, the electrical problem, right? Mm -hmm. he did, that the, there was no reason to be turned off because our power was paid up and everything. Right. Come to find out, about two blocks from our house, they literally dug up the power lines and, and discontinued our power without our consent, buried it back up, and then they wouldn't even tell you that they did it. We called Del Marva, the electric company. They pretended like they didn't know anything that was going on. Mm. But, why, but why I'm talking to Officer Lourdes, right? I'm showing him, I'm talking to him. Look, every time I call you guys out here, these people are shooting up my house. They're doing all of these things. You guys won't give me a police report. And, and, and in fact, they were told not to give me a police report. Mm. We sent a letter to Dan Hall, who was the superintendent, I guess his title would have been superintendent of Troop 10, right? Yeah. So while we're there, he, he's looking as if he's looking for the electric, but on the walkthrough, you'll see where he'll make a comment that, well, it looked like it's boarded up here. He's trying to paint a narrative that we're abandoning the property, right? But that, that's, that's his whole thing, because we found out that in the courts, they were, they were filing a petition to get possession of our property due to abandonment. So he's there to try to pretend that there's an abandonment element, but yet we're okay. talking about my left. Right. And, we, and when you watch the clip, you will hear him turn around and admit that we had it turned off. We had it turned off. That's his ah, okay. He says that on he's but you'll see he's trying to trick me up on when yeah. did you get the mortgage? How did you get this? When did you buy? That has nothing to do with you as a police officer. You were right. caught up here because somebody broke into my house again. Right, absolutely. Yeah. And then when, while he's talking about the board, uh, here's, you know, it's boarded up. He's not going to, I'll show you a picture of what you're looking at. The board he's showing it, it got keep out painted on it. But he don't mention anything about keep out. When he right. goes to my house to act like he's trying to check to see if, the, you know, if there's a fault inside the electric panel, he don't say anything about he's walking into a fully furnished living room. You understand? Right. Everything right. is, and so what I did is I did, a, I did a clip showing you that a walk by walk, everywhere we're walking, I'm showing you what he's looking at, but he's pretending not to be looking at. Yeah. So, he, so, so when he's doing all of this, and the and the other thing that because you're probably wondering when they're saying boarded up, what they're looking at is boarded up. Is it was a, it was sort of like a mother-in-law suite where it had the two the two bedrooms, the kitchen upstairs, and we had uh, redid the whole downstairs. So the the three car garage, three car yeah, three, car, three garage, car garage. Yes, we had. Um, we're we're boarding it so that we can make um, that like a how do you what call it? Making make it a, a, a make it separate entrances with finished. the windows. Right. That part just wasn't finished. Yes, does yeah. that make we, sense? So we have quite a few of those in Evanston. In fact, I was just uh, dealing with one one that our governor's sister owns. At uh, Jennifer Pritzker owns a house that has a, a mother in law back. It's almost like a, a garage that somebody could live above. Just yeah. similar to what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is so have you what about the FBI? Have you guys tried to contact them? No, I, I haven't I haven't called the FBI. I attempted to call the feds. I did attempt to call some feds, but the lady was trying to, she wouldn't give me her name on the phone. Yeah. And she um and she was trying to convince me that what we were dealing with wasn't domestic terrorism. Right. Well, um 
there's some level of collusion. So if she was, uh, what, what I'll do is once I finish this, I'm gonna I'm gonna send it to a, a, a one of my best friends who's affiliated with uh, some of those agencies and see if he can send it to the right people. Right. You know, but I mean, well, no, but that, this is a very uh, interesting and important thing. Now, let me ask you this, and this came up kind of in my psyche: Is it clan country? Well. Uh, well, let's put it this way: we're, yeah. we're we're in the middle of Delaware. It's becoming more urbanized, but at the time when we moved up there, yeah, uh, we did have a neighbor in the back that was kind of racist, and yeah. and and um, mm -hmm. we kind of got along with the neighbor on this side. But yeah. what happened? We had been to court on them because the neighbor in the back would take his back, was that a back hole with the teeth mm -hmm. thing? Would take his back hole and we, we shared a road. Yeah. And what happened was when we were first moving in there, Carl had asked the guy if he wanted to go half on the utilities because he was building in the back. And it would be it would be beneficial to both. They yeah. went half on the um, you know, the Margo digging the, the trench because um of our property and the two acres in the back. Um, gave us leeway to the main road, right? Yeah. So, but the guy refused to do that, and then he went into a contract with the neighbor over here, just so that he thought we couldn't do it on our own. <laughs> so that we, you know, what I mean, so he can build yeah, yeah. a road on the side. But yeah. then once he built a road on the side of our road, then what he did is he would come by with with a backhoe when we weren't watching, obviously, and would dig up the um. What kind of road was that? It was a gravel road. Yeah, he would did. dig up the gravel. You know, because after you have a couple of snows, all your gravel would have like holes, pinholes or whatever. He would dig up our gravel and pull it on his road. But you can see that because yeah. you can see the teeth marks go around. So it took us a minute to try to figure out how we were going to go after this because the neighbor we were having a, a cordial relationship with on this side, it was actually his road. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. We didn't yeah. know he was maintaining that road. But we knew it was his road, and we knew who did it. We just couldn't technically prove yeah, it. Yes, so we had to go after the neighbor on this side because he was receiving stolen goods. Yeah. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I, and we, I, you, and that sounds that. like yeah. That sounds like some of those lawyer tricks. I I don't I get no, it. Lawyer, they're not lawyers. They're, they're, no, I'm they're talking just, about I'm stuff. talking about how y'all had to go to court and get them yeah. for stealing something when. Yeah. You know, I it was what it, he was stealing gravel. Yeah. Well, right. well, he was he was digging up our road and putting it on his road. Right. So he was stealing road. Y'all took him to jail for. I mean, took him to court to, for stealing road. I get it. I don't want to. I don't want to uh, get take this off into a tangent. But I'm just saying, you know you're mean? Kind of I'm just we were dealing with because and they were white. We did. And we, did, was, we did with the racial And the chicken wire right. fence they put up when we got yeah. kids around just to just to spite because we won that case. Okay. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and so my, my more, my bigger concern is not your neighbors that might be mm -hmm. clan or, um, in some kind of covert union to, you know, stop black folks from prospering, which it sounds like you guys were doing, yeah. but it would be more, more the um, my belief or my interest is in the police force and the judges forced it immediately around y'all property, mm -hmm. you know, like precincts can have a vein of, of uh, racism through them. Like yes, without question, without question. Okay. Um, so when uh, I'm going back here, when I'm talking with him and I'm pointing out all of these things, he's pretending he's not going to do he that that it doesn't exist, right? But but when you go on Officer Lordage and you look at that, you're going to be really amazed. Well, after this. He was perplexed on how to deal with this because he's being recorded, and we're recording that. So mm -hmm. one day we come back again. This is this could be weeks later, a month or more later, and we come back home. Someone now after the shooting in the house and stuff like that right there, and the cops not giving us a police report. My wife freaks. She don't want to go there. She's okay. afraid for her life, right? Because yeah. They didn't kill us there, right? And so she's she's in town, but I'm still staying there at the property and what happened was is when I would come in town and she would see me she would be mad at me and upset with me because she doesn't know if she's going to see me the following day being right. so that the cops are complicit with this yeah right, right. um so so after we deal with them we're we're telling him 
about where your police officers came in, they dug bullet, they dug the bullet out of the wall. Then me, me and my wife come home one day and it's pitch. When I say it's dark, I mean, you can't see your hands in front of your face. Yeah. When I what she sleep in the car because we're pulling doubles because we're spending over a thousand dollars a month on lawful uh, um, legal fees, right? Yeah. Fighting for against this fraudulent uh, thing that's being pushed around, right? Right. So when we so when we get home, I think you were getting off like eleven forty five or something like by that. By the time you get all the yeah. Down. By the time we get home, it's twelve something at night, and we're in the so called country, right? So when we drive back up in there. She's knocked out in the car. I get out of the car, and I look. And my, my dog would normally greet me because he's on the chain by the door so he can't get in the house, right? Yeah. He didn't greet me this day. I look, he's still on the chain and he's dead. Mm. My, front, my front door is wide open. Mm. Now, I have, so my wife is in the car. I can turn back to the car and run or I can finish going into the house. Now, when you go into my house, I have my guns in different locations. So now yeah. somebody could be in my house with my guns in an area that if you shot it off, nobody would even, because we're in a semi-country. Yeah. Wouldn't even, they wouldn't even French at it, right? Right. To think it's anything suspicious, right? So we, we go, that's when we go in the house and we find out that they shut it there. Not only that, I think, is that more the power was off to? Or no, that wasn't that time. That's the following time, right? That we go in the house, we get in there, and now she's at the point she doesn't want to go in, but we could see where someone's going in and out of our house at free will. Mm. When we get there that night, it was so late in the night that you couldn't see anything. I couldn't turn the lights on for them to see anything because they didn't already shot out the, the, the lights, the security lights, and the cameras. So right. there was no reason to cut him. I checked, I checked the house. Nobody was in there. So we go to sleep and we figure we'll wake up the following morning early and we'll call the police. So when the police come out, that's when he comes out and we're telling him, we're telling these two guys that come out what's happening. And now he's there. When you're looking at my truck where someone spray painted it, it's on a big box van. He's he's emulating the person spray painting to, to see that they're height. They're tall enough to reach this high. With yeah. The letters are spray painted. He said, yeah, they had to be at least my height to reach up here. He's seeing everything. He's looking at the bullets on the wall, all of this right here. And cool. We're we're in the house waiting to go to work because we're out first thing in the morning. And when sun is almost coming up, coming home, right? That um, while we're waiting for him to do the report. You know, we, we waste about, what, a half hour in the house? Mm -hmm. And then I go back out there because she has to be to work early. And we got one car, right? So I go in there and I said, look, dude, can you, you know, how much longer do you have? Because we got to we got to get to work. And he gets out of the car and he tells me that my boss told me not to give you a police report. Then he went on to, to educate me that my property was owned by someone now I'm living in here. It's owned by the fraudulent sale that you guys forced through, right? That it's owned by these people and they can come on and do anything they want. So I told him, I said, listen, dude, I said, even if everything you thought you knew was a, uh, the fact of the matter, I still have a sense of right of tenancy. As a tenant, yeah. I still have a right. You just can't do this. Right. This is what you call robbery. First, it's armed robbery, the very fact that you're shooting out stuff. Mm. It's domestic terrorism. Yes, mm. you're, you're spray painting and uh, uh, tearing, uh, destruction of our property, taking prop, multiple counts of grand larceny. Right. That's going on here. And he can't do this. He doesn't have possession, uh, possession of this property, right? But these were the things that they were trying to do to get us out of it, freak right. us out of it, right? right? So he wouldn't give us a police report. The next engagement that we have is when we come back home from another event. And when we get there, we realized that somebody broke into our house, boarded it up from the inside. We've never been given a writ of possession. The sheriff never served us anything. And you'll see on, on our on our web page where I went to the sheriff's department and I'm serving them a letter because none of them want to take the they're afraid of the letter. Yeah. And no sheriff will put his name on a document, put it making himself responsible for being liable for the crimes that they were committing against us. Mm. So they did an end run around writ of possession to gain possession. The law states that possession cannot be established by force or coercion. So you so you're watching them, they have boarded up my property, you don't have a bit of possession. I'm talking, I'm telling her this on there. And why I'm telling her, I said, you can't do this. You're not a fair. You don't have a delegation of it. Yeah, Dana Vecchio. Dana Vecchio and Mike Giacchis. These are the yeah. ones that come in and triangulate us when they come up there when we call them for help. They're coming and triangulating us, right? Well, you know that wasn't the that wasn't the game. And you'll see in the video of Dana Vecchio, 
Del Vecchio, and she's on, it's on YouTube channel and on the website, that she's holding her gun the whole time. She's holding her gun. Like, not, she's got her hand right. while they're talking. Yeah. I don't know if she assumes that he's, since my dad's, you know, big, that he's aggressive. But the whole time they're talking and having a calm conversation. Yeah. She's got your hand on your head. Yeah, she came out to do what was unseemly. What the other ones that were too shamefaced to do, yeah. she was like an Anthony Geiger. And the crazy thing was, is she looks like her. And this is right around that event. Okay. And that was what right. she said. Oh, yeah. And so, so why would, and I'm telling you, you, you can't do this. You don't have a delegation of authority. You don't have a bit of possession. There's a due process to do this. You just can't do this by force. And she, I said, and I said, and I didn't have plenty of you guys out. Plenty of you guys need over seven police officers and all denied us a police report on any of the incidents. They were told to stand down from that. And but you all, but you have video of them. Yeah, I got yeah. video. I got video. Yeah, quite a bit of video. It's on, it's on YouTube, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and she, then she tells, I took and says, I said, you don't have a right to do this. She took and says, I said, you guys won't give me a police report. She says that, that well, we must have a good reason not to give you a police report. What would be a good reason not to give me a police report? Yeah, they still it. <laughs> that's what the guy, exactly that's the right. only reason they could give you. you know? right. So right. so in that in that particular and, moment, did they make you not come back to the house or you had to leave? Yeah, she said exactly what she said. Well, go ahead and say. No, you, she well, said well, Yeah, she, she told she told me that, that if we ever come back on that property that we would be arrested. For, um, you know, for, for, for and then the pack. whole time as she's saying this, have you ever come back on my on this property, you or your family members, so on and so forth? Mm -hmm. She has her hand on, yeah, on her gun, kind of like a threatening attack. Because you're not coming with a, you're not a sheriff. You have no, you know, authority to do this. There's a due you process. There's a, there's a lawful process. But you're holding your, your hip the whole time. Like you're yeah, saying, yeah. So she was she was committing intimidation right there. Yeah. Yes. Is it is it a um, concealed carry or open carry state? Yeah, it's an open carry state. Okay. She's, a police, she's, a, she's acting in the capacity of a police oh, officer. Okay. So, so she's engaging in judicial misconduct, which is a class A felony. And she's admitting to him that the department is engaging in uh, the, um, a felonies against a criminal felony against us. Right. Now, where um, are you, either, either you or your wife, y'all college educated? I am. And did you pledge a sorority? Oh, no, no. I, okay. I, that was not, I was in sports. I was not, I okay. didn't have time for all that. But. I understand, but the, see the, I'm in a fraternity. So at what what the, the, the maybe, you know, you would have a sorority sister that's a lawyer that you could actually go to. Cause right now uh, from listening to your husband, Y'all don't feel comfortable with anybody, or you haven't got a lawyer that really has the guts to step up and do what. And, you and that, 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 that's the part you just said. We had we yeah. had an attorney that we used to use for um, a lot of you know uh, small legal stuff for property for property yeah. stuff, and we had went to him for advice. And he and, and again, he was just like a property in lawyer his field. and in his field, and he he pretty much told her told us. In a nice way, it, it's going to be a, I don't know who would take this case. Well, I, I tell you what, when I went to see him, well, I called him. Yeah. And seeing that he was going to file, doing a case for Apple Crumbie and Fitch at the time. And I forgot all about him. It's like, let me ask him and see what he could do for us, right? And he has a history with the property. So actually, when we bought our property, there was a realtor who wasn't filing all of the proper paperwork. He was disbarred. And he was one of the people who helped me straighten out the legalities of my property and standings, right? Yeah. So he so he already can un, he already has documentation that would refute what's in, in the law offices today. But when I called him, he's very, very he was very effective. Um, when I called him, and I don't want to mention his name, but I called him on the phone and he just started mentioning family house, your wife, and but he's going by name, the kids and everything. And I said, fine. I said, I got a little problem here. And I told him what the problem was. He said, well, Carl, what's the address? I gave him the address, right? He calls me back like many of other attorneys. He calls me back in about 10 minutes later. Now, this dude is like Jet Li in the courtroom. Huh? He going to courtroom. He like Jet Li, right? He calls me back up 10 minutes later. And he says, Carl, I'm damn near 61 years old, and I ain't built for this. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> he said, this is this about is, to be a Jackie. problem. Yes. Okay. Because he's seen that we have attorneys that were, when Janice Lee taught, when we took and gave her the documentation showing her that she was not even an attorney, but yes. she's able to take in petition in multiple courts and be heard. Her documents can be heard and she's not even an attorney. We processed this on multiple courts. She took and disappeared and she tried to join up with another group. Remember three, uh, three and we sent them, we sent them a document letting them know as well that they're contracting with us and that they don't even have a charter. But <laughs> even the last time when we went to court, mm -hmm. she didn't even come and the judge was acting without the attorney Present yes. for the opposition. You good for the opposition, and mm -hmm. that's if if we didn't show up, that case would be out, thrown out, right? Well, they would they would have put a judgment on you. Yeah, yes. exactly. exactly. Yeah. And when you when you when you go and you see this right here, how thick this document is. Yeah. That this right here document, right? The governor, the the attorney general, uh, Dan Weeks, which was the district attorney general. They're holding on this document showing you fraud across the board. This is almost like a 76 page document showing you all of the fraud across the board. Where, is that the securitization? Yeah, the securitization. The securitization. And, and it's and it's on the it's on the web page too. You can you can probe through it. You'll see the crimes that were committed. Not only that, we filed in the courtroom for to, to overturn the, uh, the judgment. We had a paper showing you that the property, when well, you're familiar with real estate. The, the fraud, even the fraudulent one that they were forcing through, right? It had three broken chains of title. It never even was conveyed by the original lender. Mm. The, uh, the lender had no authority to forward or to take and sell or move any mortgages. And we listed a ton, we listed so many reasons for this thing to be overturned that they asked us to take and take it back and short. Remember that? We had to go back and, we had to go back and short it, right? Right. So never met the, 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 the day of light. And the, the attorney general, as well as the governor, um, they are they were all in possession looking at documents that says subject to you'll see them there on the webpage, subject to penalty of perjury when each state that it goes into, which now we're talking about international racketeering, mm. state that it goes to, each state, each state so-called consignment assignment contradicts the following, which means every name on there is subject to penalty of perjury, right? right. Not only that, St uh, Steve or Stephen A. Allen, I mean, Stephen Allen Johnson. Yeah. When you look at this is still, all of this is still going through a Michael E. Um, Kawazicki, who, who's running the chop shop at the recorder of these, right? Yeah. He, where it's, he's the one who's stamping all of these off. So he's subject to penalty of perjury, forwarding poisonous, knowingly poisonous documents that contradict one after another and entering them into the general public. Now you have to understand, we had, we, we had a line of credit for $200,000. And mm -hmm. do you know every time that they created them, every time they, they, they changed the address, they created a mortgage? Wow, a new mortgage. It had to, had to. Okay. Right now. Now, when you get to when you go when it comes back to from Texas to California and back into Delaware, now all of a sudden it's showing it's, it's three properties, not one, right? It doesn't have a history at all, right? When you go to those three properties, as a as a person dealing with mortgages, can you take and go get a mortgage on three properties on one document? Uh, I don't know. I never heard of that, but um... you have to buy you when you go in when you go into settlement, you make a settlement on each and every property. Yeah, everyone had a parcel number. Okay, so yeah, no, I, I totally get the process. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean, and I I totally understand y'all circumstance right here, except for now you fighting from behind. So somebody else right now holds the property, and they have and the other you know and the possession of the property. Yeah, well, so, about so, that possession. When, yeah, when we we did a we did an interview with a brother by the name of John Dentz, right? Mm -hmm. When he did an interview with us, right? He looked it up on his, when he looked it up on Google Earth and it showed that they tentatively sold my one property for 160,000, right? Now this property that sold for 160,000, I'm making comments on his talk show, right? Yeah, yeah. Right, right beneath it, it's almost a three quarter acre pond, 19 feet deep with an island in the middle of it. And it's just stocked with fish, right? 
I have I have my my two story my uh, two story house that we converted the lower level into a garage. But down the hill, when they take a picture, they don't take a picture of down the hill, which is on the same lot. I have a I have a, a structure that I built down there that's worth at least four hundred thousand. But yet a realtor took and sold a property for one hundred and sixty thousand. So when I made that comment showing you that this is still the same people who are jockeying a fraud, right? Yeah. And I made that comment. We go and look today, and you can see that they changed it to four hundred. There was someone bought it four hundred uh, for four hundred thousand dollars before the date of what we just watched. Looked at about two months ago. They changed the date. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> and, and now see, but, but once again, my battle is this is if we're talking about crime, my battle is this: they do not have no. I don't care how many people that and all of the legalities. Yeah. At the end of the day, there is an unlawful possession of the property. It was gained by an act of force and armed robbery. Yeah. With state officials being complicit. Absolutely. That is my property. I should be able to walk home and go home, and who's ever in my property should be shackled. <laughs> That's what we talk. You understand what I'm talking about? Well, whoever whoever had the possession or took possession of it from you and everybody in the line of the mortgage and fraud, because you could have been renting to me. And yeah, I would yeah. I wouldn't want you to show up and shackle me because I didn't want yeah. rent rent it. But I hear what you're okay. saying and I understand. But the person, right, but Very the person who that. has it is yeah. already in that deal. I well, have, yeah, have yeah, yeah, no. Right, All is, of them from the mortgage, the mortgage yeah. officer that uh, or the um title company it that originally messed up uh your original uh secondary loan that you talked about. That's the one line of credit. Yeah, line of credit. Mm -hmm. Okay. That should be the first person and the first entity to fall because right. that's why this, that's the way the system works. That's why you hire a title company right. because they exactly. ensure that both sides will be treated fairly. Mm -hmm. And somehow from there, somebody else got involved uh, stating that you didn't, you either didn't pay that mortgage or they were just trying to steal it out right anyway. Yeah, exactly. With, with the parties that the parties that are in the parties that they claim to be working for, yeah, they're gunning the same way, and yeah. no, and nobody's ratting on no one. No one will say we did not send her out there, or we did send her out there. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, so that's the game that you're playing now. But again, at the end of the day, that it is an un that the law states that the possession cannot be established by an act of force or coercion. Right. If, if, if cons murder, conspiracy to commit murder, multiple counts of judicial misconduct, which is class A of felonies, multiple counts of grand larceny, multiple counts of trespass, multiple counts of reckless endangering the lives of me and my family, multiple counts of obstructing criminal obstruction of justice. All of these are criminal. Mm -hmm. These oh, are yeah. what, and uh, yeah, an unlawful tactic used for ousting. There is a, there's still no matter. Animal, animal cruelty. Yes. And, yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, all of that. In my property do not belong in my property. It's not. It's not. It is not lawful for you to take my property by force and then say I want you to spend a million dollars trying to come back and get your property. Trying to get it's it like back. Like you said, possession is nine tenths of the law. Yeah. I had possession. They had a problem getting possession through lawful practices because right. we're sending them all of the documents showing you that it was fraudulent. You created it. The sheriff's department was in on it. You know they filed and when the lady. When I'm talking to this, um, uh, what is her name, Geiger? Uh, not Geiger. Um, uh, Dana Vecchio and Mike uh, Mike Diakis. What she does is she goes down to her car and she does a, a, a fax paper through her through the car. They can fax through the car. When she faxes through the car, she just simply faxes us the current change. That once again, the very sheriff. Um, Samuel D. Pratchett Jr., the very one who filed the original fraudulent document, he writes a testament on a new um, on a new um, title saying, "I testify this day that so and so are the purchasers and the owners of this property." So he goes back; he's able to go back in and further his criminal activity yeah. on this particular document, and, right? And I came in on this late, so I don't know if he if he mentioned this, but one of the times we were in court as well, the question the question was at the question. The, Question I posed to them was, well, first of all, in all of this, we have to be served. Right. Who has served us? No one has served us. Right. And they said, oh, they they served you. They served they served someone at your property. That now, granted, my husband, 
me and my two daughters. And right. my daughter were, were, were one just getting in high school and I was middle school, so you know they small. So they said, um, it was it was a, a five, what did they say, five, five ten, eight. five eight, five eight male that we gave it to. Now, I, I definitely don't look like a male, so they're not talking about me, and I'm only yeah. five six. My husband is five three. <laughs> So no, you're, you're not mistaken. Five, you look a lot tall. Five, three. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, so, no, we we are we know they lying. They know they lying. So definitely. So, but I'm just I'm still good. I'm still wondering why they're why y'all don't have even even uh lawyers can come from other states. You know what I mean? As long as they can practice in that state, if they why are y'all why can't y'all find somebody with some balls down there? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, my, my thing is, is I was hoping that from you being the resource to put this thing out here, yeah. our, ne our next stage is to go to the feds. We didn't want to go to the feds and they do us more harm than yeah. good. So we wanted our story to be told so that it's, it's, it's in clarity. And when we deal with them, we want to make sure that even that is, in I don't need somebody intimidating me on what you're going to do to me because I'm standing up for my home that y'all stole. And you yeah. won't you won't make a rest to your buddies because that's that's what it comes down to. See now, just so that we could, it's going to sound a little suspicious, but the last time we had a meeting was supposed to be on the ninth. Uh, uh, when the, when it came down to the ninth, we happened. Me and we, me and my daughter was in the car, right? And all of a sudden, about ten or a couple minutes before our meeting, we lose our our Wi-Fi. But yeah. there was a, there was no, our internet. service our service yeah. there was a servicer outside right so we called the servicing company and tell them it just so happens just before we supposed to come on that we lose our uh, our our service right and the guy never would look at me that was on hold right when we called our our servicer the lady told us that Mr uh, Bailey I don't understand because we have no report of any problems in your area and we don't have any invoice requests to do any services on downlines or services, period, in your area. Mm. Just disappear, right? So you don't so the dude on that poll might be like a might be like a I well, my phone, it, it's very clear. There's comments that I've made on my phone, like just putting people on notice to watch this right here. Yeah. So I, it's there, and, it, and this is not the first time. Okay. Uh, we, but right? it was suspicious because yes. our bills are paid up. Yes. Yeah, there's no reason why guys over there on the pole, nobody's new moved near us. Yeah. Um, and when I called, they're like, I don't know why your service is not, I don't know what happened to your service. We can't figure out why. And then they send somebody out the next day who gets on the pole and does something that they don't even got coming in our house, just something on the pole, mm -hmm. turns it back on. Yeah, it, the line the line was cut. And not only that, I recorded me talking with them when he makes that statement. Okay. Yeah, that it that it was disconnected. That that was on that was one occasion um also i had we what i did is all of our communication was to come through my p.o box so we sent in our court cases and filings and stuff it was through a p.o that way we're we're in federal jurisdiction it's coming through federal mail right in their right. post office now there's times that i went over to my my post office box where my key would not work it just wouldn't and, and i'm trying to get my mail out. i even went to the counter and i asked, i asked the lady about it she, i said i said key or something right and she took and says oh it must be your key i said i have the right key so i took and said well can i get my mail i have my id she says no Ooh. wow and i think i need to get that out here because of because you don't know where just as they were able to all of this right here filing cases within and amongst themselves processing yeah. them amongst themselves awarding themselves judgments against people all by themselves to themselves. Yeah. So this, so this arm has been very, it's been very, uh, a lot of, let's just say, a lot of strange things have been going on around well, this. Right I mean, there's, there's been clear documentation about collusion on the, uh, for whatever reasons throughout the history of America by judges. Yes. Uh, you know, Chicago has been famous for like our silver shovel and other. Okay other uh, cases that hit the national news, especially mm -hmm. from the 80s up until now, where police all the way, judges all the way up to even, uh, sometimes you can consider congressmen and senators 
being in the collusion, yes, yes. being that's involved it. with collusion. So right. that's one of the things that you had kind of indicated now that we have Biden in presidency. Yes. Uh, you stated that some of the people involved with the mortgage companies and your mortgage especially have uh, ties to higher ups and it could possibly uh, even reach the president's uh, the president's office. Can you make, uh, can you dream with me the connection if you can? Cause you know what's going on in your state uh, right. and you've done a lot of research. So have you seen some names that seem to appear at other places? Uh, and, uh, go ahead and tell me what, what your thoughts are behind that. And we're not making any, any straightforward accusations, right. but we're trying to put together a puzzle so well, go our, ahead. And well, our, many of our, lo let's put it this way, Aaron. many of our local officials have a history here. They, okay. they just wasn't appointed yesterday. Yeah. And for, the, and for the sake of my life and my family's life, I'd rather not touch that part. Okay. All right. You understand? And yeah. another thing w w I was talking about as well is that on our, on our YouTube page, when we, re when we put on a posting at the recorder of deeds, with me servicing the letter, I noticed when I went back to look on it, my daughter did work for me, that we went back to look at it, we seen where someone was able to hack into our YouTube page and, and eliminate parts of the actual recording. Now, who could do that? I do not know. So we Hack had into it and then edit your recording? Yeah. When, when, and when then re-upload re it? Yeah, when I was recording, yeah. Part of me showing the faces of who I'm delivering it to. I did it just in spurts, right? Yeah. They were out. So I thought I didn't rewind the, the, uh, the recording part. So are enough. you saying that the faces were, you just that, that, the part, face? that part of the video was missing. It's cut out, edited out. Cut out, yes. Wow. So we had to go, we had to go back and remember that? We had to go back and re-edit that whole thing, right? Re-upload it. Yes, and the same lady that was at the sheriff's department is the same lady when I went to the attorney general's office trying to get help there. Yeah. She couldn't see me, but the clerk, she knew who I was. So yeah. she jumped up and she ran to the back, who yeah. informed, which is another, another attorney general who is, um, what is that, Kathleen Jennings, who is, I, from what I understand, she was a lead, like a lead, one of the lead prosecuting attorneys for the attorney general office under Matt Dent. Man, mm -hmm. then bailed out. She moved forward, so okay. everybody replaces everybody. Right? Yeah, it shifts and, up. Yeah, exactly. Same people, same shifting, right? Mm -hmm. And so you can protect my 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 past when you come. Yeah. In. So she wouldn't she wouldn't take any of this right here. You talking mm -hmm. about the one lady that you want to see? Um, was it in the uh, attorney general's the one lady that you wanted to see? And the one lady was was going through all your stuff and was like, "This is it. oh I yes. can't believe you're talking about that." Oh, um, at the Planetary's office. Yeah. Well, when we were when we were filing to have our we were filing to take and have the case dismissed, right? When we were filing it, we were talking to a young lady down in the Planetary's office, right? While mm -hmm. we we're talking with her, she shifts us over to her supervisor. Her supervisor is looking for the past accounts, our filings and stuff, because they right in the Planetary's office. We have documents showing you that at the pathometary's office level, they are changing the documents right there. And the girl admitted that they have a right to change that. They do it all the time. And I'm telling her, you can't do that. She says, well, yes, we can. They change case numbers and everything after they're following you. So inside, it's a clinic going on there, right? right. So when, when I'm speaking to the one lady at the desk trying to get the information, there was a young white lady there who was a supervisor. And she was just honest. She was just doing business. And when she's looking at when she's looking at it, she's diligently trying to find us stuff. But there was a lady who heard us talking. She was the one working with the file. Her, the um, the, uh, the file, she was doing filing. And the first lady that I spoke to, I realized that she kind of like ducks into the side of the between the aisles, right? While I'm asking questions, then she migrates to where we're at. And the very question I'm asking, trying to retrieve those documents. She is one of the people who I filed a judgment against. I have a judgment against. So mm. she was aware of the filing. She came by and she stood there and pretended like she knew nothing about it when the other three women were trying to get it. And then when I went back over to the, 
the former lady that I was talking to, I asked, I said, who is that lady's name? She told me her name. Sue, was it Susan Hearns? Mm -hmm. Susan Hearns, right? She, she said, her Susan Hearns. I said, that's the one of the ones I got judged. She said, you need to take this to the feds. She said, you need yeah, to. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. You, yeah, you need to take you, this you, to the feds. Yeah. Right where, um, yeah. Like I said, I got a I got a good friend of mine who's uh who has some tentacles up there, and uh, I'm on. I actually texted him while we was talking. He hasn't texted me back, and mm -hmm. you know um, when he does, I'll 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 try to get him a copy of this, mm -hmm. and then maybe he could forward it to somebody who might be able to, you know, talk to you about it. Um, I think as soon as the moment that they came to your house with a gun. Mm -hmm. You should have been on, you know, and you kind of knew you couldn't trust the local police mm -hmm. and uh, obviously the state police. Then you you should have went straight to the feds, you know, what I mean, because uh, yeah. it's crazy that they had your had you outside of your house talking about, you know, Mortgage you can't go back in. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. With her. Now, that's how have, people end up in uh, shootouts with the police. Yeah. Had you had a couple more sons or, uh -huh. you know, a couple you know, more brother, guys in your life that would have stood with you. Well, my brother, my brother, on that, on one of the clips, you're going to see that when Dana Vecchio and Mike Diakis comes up, right, before they get there, we're looking at people trenching trenches on our property. Why we're still there. We haven't been evicted or anything. Yeah. Not you looking at people setting up in the trenches? Yes. yes. Digging, so they, the so they in other words, they kind of, yes. so they, they set up the perimeter just in case y'all started to shoot. No, they, no, they no, were, met, they were digging people, a three foot trench. Where people to work like they, was on, like they was trying to um, work on the property. Going to my rear property. To the rear, the so back, on the, on the part that was wooded. And my brother said, Carl, don't go back there because that's the back property I was talking about. He said, don't go back there because they may kill you back there. Now, well, that's what I was, I was saying. They That would be, the theory is that they said that they're in such a collusional uh, state yes. that they would set up people armed <laughs> back there and they might have been disguised as you know workers for something. But as soon as you pull up your gun and, and put it out, they, they would well, probably... They're going to put it their narrative out. Yeah. That's what they're going to put is their narrative out. And they, have, and they have to kill the information, and I just happen to be the information. The reason that they bust into my home without a writ of possession and stuff is when I'm talking to Dana Vecchi or Mike Diakis, you'll see when she says, well, do you got any paperwork on it? And I said, yeah, if I can get in the house, you'll see that she's relieved. And she's relieved because she believes that she took all of my films and stuff and all of the documents from the courts committing frauds against us. And she believed that she seized all of that. And the only clip that I have is hers, which is current. But we started to move things when we realized people were coming into our house. I started to files again. Yeah. I started and, and when my brother, <laughs> my brother is there on, on the one with Dana Vecchio and Mike Diakis, prior to them coming up, I normally go down with a friend of mine, right? That would yeah. come down the house with me. He walked around the house and he's looking at everything. And why he's looking at everything, he freaks. He's my older brother. He's like, oh my God, this is like 1600 stuff, right? He freaks, right? So at that time, when we come to the front, it just so happens now the cops are coming up. Mm -hmm. So when they come up, he knows that I'm going to, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to frustrate nobody, but I'm going to ask questions. And you'll see me asking questions. You don't yeah. have, you know, I'm going to ask questions so it can be thoroughly documented. Before they came up, he said, he says, Carl, he says, Carl, shut up, don't say nothing. That's my nickname, Carl. He said, shut up, don't say nothing. He says, because these people are planning on killing you back here. Let's just get out of here. So when the cops come up, he runs in front of me and tells them, he wants them to know that, that I have guns in my house so that they don't do something with my guns and then turn around and try to make it seem like I was doing something with guns, right? Yeah, yeah. So he wanted to have that on the record that my prop, that those guns are in the police possession now so if a crime yeah. and stuff was committed right and um and you'll hear her laugh when she's talking with him he said well if you come back on this property you're going to be arrested blah 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 she says i know i don't have to tell you because if she's laughing and joking with me like as in he's 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 totally free these people have plans on killing you back here because you have these are these are police officers who are aiding and abetting in all of these criminal conducts against you Right, and you have records, you have recordings of the market. Yeah, so you talk, so you're looking at 
federal crimes that they're committing. This yeah, because because uh, actually, um, it sounds like I'm not a lawyer, obviously, but it sounds like once the chips fall, it's going to be if the chips fall correctly, mm -hmm. which means you got to have some people involved and the feds get involved. They got the guts. Mm -hmm. if they want to follow through, but then you got all them police going to get fired. Yes. Uh, you know, arrest the, let's try arrest. This, yeah. right here, this is the, this is domestic terrorism. If yeah. you don't think bullets in your wall and Aaron, this is, this is the trying to get you to put yourself in my position and my wife. No, no, I, I understand. I'm just saying, uh, you know, I'm just saying that you can't prove who shot your, your, your wall up. But you definitely have already gotten evidence of who was in collusion in a uniform that walked up to your house and helped you get put out of it. Yeah, well, we got we got and evidence got, where they got took evidence. to remove the bullets from the crime scene. And, and oh, you got how, how do you got evidence of that? You never did uh, say you got me, evidence of it. Well, you'll see me talking to Officer Lordage, well, Corporal Lordage, about his, his past people because he won't deny none of it. Your past people come in here, they even remove bullets from my wall and won't even give me a police report. Tell me your boss told him not to. He won't say anything. He's he don't know how to deal with it. Oh, he, he goes to say anything. Right now. Yeah, right. So when you look when you look at those recordings, you'll Great. see that One the hey, um, I got a, 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 a I'm gonna call you back with the details of this, but one of my a friend of mine has got some some shady stuff that's happening uh in Delaware. And and uh, it it reaches all the way up to the police force, so he he can't trust the police force, uh, and it's pretty solid, you know. What I mean, it's a, it's a he has a well documented situation. So I was wondering if you could figure out how to get either email or telephone number or something, you know, through the process and stuff you know about to get somebody to talk to in the state of Delaware. And that's all. I'll call you back. Ain't no. You know, we'll we'll figure it out. All right, yeah. Uh, just hit me back when you can. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Right. Yeah, and if he if he looks on my web page, you'll see on my wife, my my daughter, did yeah. an awesome job creating a web page on there that you, that can take you. Is it the YouTube take, channel or the web? It, it, has the the it has the links. It has the link to the web. Page. It's fine. Uh, what? Well, that was one of my like I said, one of my best friends. He's been in the CIA. Uh, CIA, DIA, and FBI oh, this guy. as an intelligence officer, and he yeah. and you know they all kind of interact together. He's one of the few <laughs> black cats that that they have in a higher up uh, level. Now he work, you know. Now he's uh, he, he's gonna get back to me, and we'll we'll see if there's something that can be done uh, on that level. Uh, also, what when I get this up, I'm gonna try to put it in a couple. Um, newspaper i mean uh news dudes that i know um and, uh, from chicago uh our our news reaches everybody channel nine channel five comes out a lot so we'll see if we can get this thing some legs it sounds so interesting it reminds me of when um these types were stealing property from people back in like 1910 and yeah, you know uh, Right. Yeah, it's it's pretty much the same thing. That's why I'm I'm wondering one, do you have some oil under there, or do you have some diamonds, or some gold, or some you know <laughs> some kind of something in that area? Besides, it can't just be a really nice area to fish. You right. know what I'm saying? They going way beyond. They risking they they risking their lives and uh, freedom. It's got to be something on that land that they trying to get. It, it is it is oh, amazing property, plan. but yeah, and it could be part of a bigger plan, but. I have, I have where we went now when we filed. Well, wait, you know what? This here's a question I didn't, I haven't, okay. I don't remember hearing. On the original mortgage, y'all were paying the mortgage, right? On the line of credit for the rear yeah. property. Yeah. What happened was, is on that rear property, it was a line of credit. You know how you use your primary property for for emergency uh, cash, right? Yeah. Well. When we back in around 2005, when we were dealing with the savings and on the housing loan, 2008, when all of that calamity was going on, yeah. we went we went through the motion trying to get a trying to get a refi for the property because we wanted to keep that property, right. thinking we were dealing with that property. 
But yeah. we were being denied a loan. We didn't understand why right. until later on. What they did, the ingenious thing that they did is that they put a mortgage on the property that would give us the bailout. So we couldn't pay it. They put a mortgage on the property. Yeah. Remember that I told you it's... lots, there's three lots. Remember we talked about it was three lots. Yeah, right? the three lots, yeah. The small lot that was in the back was just a lot. Yeah. When he when he changed it, when he changed that mortgage and changed the address, he put it on our primary property that's worth well over four hundred thousand dollars. And right. we couldn't get a loan on it because there was already a line of credit on it. Not to mention that when they took and transferred it from one state to another state to another state. We yeah. couldn't bail out with that because each state that they transferred it to, they created another mortgage for two hundred thousand plus. So, in other so words, you got the, three, you got six hundred thousand dollars worth of mortgages. Hey, more, more by the time you're looking at penalties and interest and stuff. Yeah, well, yeah that's not what we then. signed up. We right. signed up for one right. for eight hundred thousand. So we couldn't even bail. When they said it was, and, they, and then, mm -hmm. then they they tried to combine all three lots mm -hmm. when it wasn't on all so three lots. So you still lots. couldn't use your so resources. Even if, so even, okay, even if we'd have fallen on the, the initial loan, let's just right. put it that way. If we'd have fallen on the initial loan, it technically should have been the back two acre lot. Right. If that was on there. That wasn't even one the house was on. Right. right. The back two acre lot. Mm -hmm. But right. they made it so that it was all three. Right. So they No, I get it. I get it. I just wanted to. And it I makes just wanted sense. To... Because no, they, I, didn't I, have, I... they didn't have, they didn't have, you can't, you can't, that's a. The back two acre lot is a yeah. landlocked lot. Yeah. You know, landlocked. So that one in the front allows us to have egress to the road and stuff. So right. No, I I totally I totally get it. I just wanted to get that out there. Yeah. yeah because because they, they it's important. It's they important. Our safety net. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Aaron. No, no, we we having a conversation. It's important to get that out there because yeah. that in the end, you know how they do people with yeah. people that yeah. they yeah. like yeah. black people let's just be honest you know yeah. how they do us they they say oh he was a criminal anyway yeah right yeah. They, yeah. Kill, they kill the dude and say oh well he was a criminal anyway well he wasn't committing a crime right there yeah. so right now what what they what they probably gonna try to go back to which is fake and false they're gonna right. be like well you didn't pay that uh mortgage anyway well that mortgage was on a on a piece of land a piece of property that if y'all wanted it you could have got it but that ain't gonna kick me out my house yeah, exactly. and exactly. so they fixed it so that all your property was combined and they could take it all from you because yeah. they you know if they was really right. they, and it, it, it even it even affected our our investment properties because it made us cash strapped the very property that we had like I said, that property easily, my structure on the bottom is over four hundred thousand dollars. Right. Plus my home, right? Yeah. Five, and that one lot is eight point five four plus the other lot that we had that was tied to it, right? Yeah. So that that was our our safety net anytime something came down the pipe. And two thousand eight yeah. was something we would never forget. No, right? I, I lost uh I lost two properties in yes. two thousand eight. Mm -hmm. Uh and, and we lost ours because we could not utilize our resources because of fraudulent filing. Oh, and one thing I did mention, I didn't mention, is that when we're looking at uh, Stephen A. Johnson, who was the, the vice lending president of Countrywide Lending. Now, yeah. he filed, now, according to Michael E. Kawazicki, who's the recorder of deeds, who's forcing a, a changing the documents, using the recorder of deeds like a chop shop, right. that this guy is able to come into the recorder of deeds, and we got documents where he changed his name from Stephen to Stephen. Different mm. spelling, like P H and V, mm -hmm. and that's two P H E N, and then S T E V E N, and then when you go on the internet and you look at him, when you look at him under uh, his name is Steve, so it's Steve, Stephen, and Steve. Mm. Yeah. So how do you file a lawful document with an AKS and a document that's subject to penalty of perjury under the law? Right. So every person is on that document is perjuring themselves. Every attorney that came in and tried to forward fraudulent documents is that. Now, uh -huh. it gets bigger than that. I now, get it. I totally get it. Now, with let's say that this this is what we're looking at. You lose a property. You, you don't even lose it, but they take it, manhandle you, and they take it by force, right? On that property, while you're trying to fight for this, right, they change the paperwork with no, no, no winning nothing in the court. When they change it, what they do is you have a lot of people that are, and we even have a guy who owns a prison that they, they put their name on your property as having consideration in your property. 
So yeah. what happens is they, 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 they drive your property into collections, right? You got six people that put their name on there that they have interest in it, right? And consideration in it. So now you have to go to six different people and resolve an issue that <clears throat> on a mortgage that never existed. Right. You understand? So if they put No, I, I totally it, get the fraud. You and, understand uh, that uh, all of them are complicit in racketeering. So we're dealing under Title 18, Section 13, 241, and 242, um, which is our RICO Act, Deprivation yeah. Act. We're, we're engaging in racketeering. Yeah. Yeah, they are. All of them are. Man, I, I really, I really hope and I'm gonna do my best and pass this yeah, around yeah. to get um to get them. You know what right. I mean? Because if you're talking damages, because yeah. most of the times the judges give you um a settlement based on damages. Y'all, man, I, I'm gonna have to give me a Lamborghini from y'all. Uh -huh. <laughs> <For Christmas. laughs> well, it, it's strange. If, it worked the right way. Y'all gonna get hundreds of millions of dollars if you get a lawyer with some nuts. Well, according to due process, and when we when we sent the paper, the paper that you'll see that we're giving the um, the sheriff's department, we're service, uh, we're serving quite a few different people who are inside of this right here sphere of racketeering. Yeah. That on there, we have terms and conditions set that if they engage in any activity, that they accept our terms and conditions. With, with us having exclusive control. On that control, to this date, we have lawful judgments on every person that we serve that extend over $20 million. And it increases to about $8,500 a day. Mm. Okay. That these, are, this is, these are judgments. These are yeah. not going into the courtroom to win it because they accepted and they wasn't able to refute and rebut their claim. We, 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 ref, we told them that, first of all, according to our affidavit of facts, that the state doesn't even have a delegation of authority or charge. Mm. So all of the properties that they were seizing outside and throughout their courts were fraud against the people. Right. They lost their charter in November of 2012. Not a single attorney from the attorney's board, neither the attorney general, neither the governor or the mayor refuted and rebutted this to this very day. So right. they accepted my terms and conditions. And so we can easily say that we're closer to $21 million a person and we serve over 40 people. Wow. These are judgments. Now the problem is it's collecting. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, awesome. And I'm, understand? I'm very happy for you uh, okay. in that step and collecting is gonna be very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but having that down um, in the record books also is important because yeah. this has been happening to black folks for decades. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? For decades, uh, our okay. property has been stolen out from up under us using the collusion in the legal system. Yes, right. And once once mm -hmm. you guys prove or g g get this put into the record books fully, mm -hmm. I'm sure there's going to be lots of people out here who, you know, it'll be... Or they have a means of recourse. And, yeah. and not and only it, that... Yeah, it's, when, already, it's already filed in Washington under the UCC filings that it stands as absolute truth in law. It's no one has been able to refute it yet. So therefore, it is absolutely it's it's already has standing. They just haven't told the people that document. What I like to do is I'm going to send you that document. Okay. And you all will look at that document, and where you're talking about it, it's the issue where you're at, it's going to definitely look. Well, that's awesome, it man. Um, it applies. Yeah, I, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure some piece of it is gonna apl uh, apply because if it come, well, um, our situation is is so important because our city, Evanston, right now is the only city. Um, I don't even know if it's only city in history, but in current history, that is close to signing an actual reparations bill. Wow of any type. And we all know how much this country has exploited black skin. Mm -hmm. So once they're, uh, and it's all based on um, marijuana sales mm -hmm. and it's connected to who has had a house mm -hmm. and uh, in the city of Evanston and has been exploited. So it's mortgage okay. connected. Oh, yeah. Obviously, it's going to be mortgage connected in some way. Whose family? You have to have been in the city of Evanston for, I think, like 50 to 60 years uh -huh. and own a house. Right. So they're going to connect it to, to mortgages. Uh, uh -huh. 
seeing something that's like what you're talking about is going is uh, absolutely going to be filtered into there somehow. And it's some it's some banks that we've always been um, questioning their motives involved. So I can't wait to pass this around, and hopefully somebody will have the guts to to uh, really call y'all and and put it forward, man. I, if is there a closing statement that you would like to uh, put out here? Well, no, I just wanted, I don't know what he said before I came in from work, yeah. but I just wanted to say when you were making the comment about the actual mortgage companies, that it was countrywide that yeah. changed over to Bank of America. And yeah. we already know that those are ones that were in the media, the news with issues to begin with as well. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. 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 Uh -huh. um, my, my thing is, is that you could, you could not possibly understand how many media stations that we try to contact to take and publicize this locally. Then you'll understand what the power of having control of the, the local media and being able to create a blackout on news looks like. It, yeah. It, it and it's is, not only media. We, I mean, yes. you went to, you, you're sending it to, we were going to each the attorneys and we were going to um, sending it to the different attorney generals and the different people there that we thought we had to go to. Didn't think about the FBI. But we were just going up the chain, mm -hmm. trying to send it to who we can send it to, a governor, or this, trying to but send media it to state, but media stations as well. And it's quite a few prominent ones that we've seen on YouTube now. My, my thing is this right here. Because of how information seems, I, I don't know if this information is being, has been intercepted. You understand what I'm saying? Well, no, um, I have... Uh, well, I understand that, but it, as of right now, it looks like I have a recording mm -hmm. of it. Now, if somehow somebody erased it off my computer, that's going to be some interestingly magical stuff. Right. Uh -huh. I'll, in, I'll immediately back it up since you didn't put that on the table because, wow. You know, yeah, I, mean, they, somebody, they, they, I don't I don't live in the neighborhood that white folks can just walk into uh, and be going in your house. So it's going to have to be some black folks. Right. And I yeah. live in an area where all the old ladies that live on my block look out the window. Right. Yes. We, get a, we get a strange truck or right. a strange car and somebody go in my house. Uh, it's a good chance that somebody going to see it uh -huh. uh, unless it's at you know, four in the morning, and then I'm going to be in here. Right. And, and uh, I, I'm i not in the neighborhood where they can just come in here without me shooting at yeah. them. Uh -huh. and uh, but I don't also don't want to end up on the news as my whole house is shot up because like yeah. uh, Sandra Bland, uh, God rest her soul, and this is actually mm -hmm. the day that she, you know, makes it a year that she was killed uh -huh. in that house raid. You know what I mean? So yeah, making an excuse for something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So just let's put that out there. We both <laughs> don't do no drugs. We both don't drink. We both work two jobs. Mm -hmm. So right. let's put that out there. There mm -hmm. is no it, nothing. If anything pop off here, there yeah. is nothing going on. And it's yeah, it's absolutely um some kind of attack yes. uh coming Definitely. from the outside of y'all. And and the fact that you um, did not shoot at the lady who came to your property with the gun. So yeah, I, got, that would show that you are a peaceful, you are a peaceful law-abiding man right. um, that, that is willing to go through the system. Uh -huh. Now we have to get in a position where the system actually treats Black folks equally uh -huh. and goes by the law in its own right, because that's where it's been missing. The, the law itself has not been followed by people within the system, right? Exactly. And that's where the collusion uh, uh, is going is is, and I really hope that you guys are able to prove in the law of court and receive all the settlement and all the blessings you uh, deserve. Yeah, um, there there was a, a fellow by uh, that recorded like you're doing now. Yeah, and it's been a blessing. When you go onto the web page, you'll be able to scroll down to the bottom, and you'll see that where you can hear the audio recording. Yeah, that's yeah. down on the bottom, right? Um, and to know that that you're going to take and push this forward for me and my family, it means it means possibly some form of safety because we already stepped forward. 
Yeah. Sometimes when you step forward, they don't permit you to step backwards unless you're dead. Yeah. Um, and, you know, so it's about pushing it. And the very fact, man, that, you know, you're showing us love that you would even give us the opportunity to put this thing out here because we have we've had dozens of people who would not would not even respond to this. Yeah, well, like Dave Chappelle said, I'm from Chicago. We're not a scared people. I'm glad you're from Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I thank you for your time. And again, I give you another opportunity to, to get a closing statement before we shut it off. We're going on two hours and uh, it has been very informative. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's be it's our best, it's in our best interest to keep it under two hours because people see stuff that's two hours and five and 50 minutes and they like, nah, I don't really want to get into this, you know. I'm gonna wow. try to pull out some pieces and and use a couple of clips mm -hmm. to, to 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 tease people into watching it. Mm -hmm. But um, it's been very interesting for the person who is connected to mortgages and who cares about the government stealing money from people, or well, the government being in collusion mm -hmm. uh, with stealing from people, because it mm -hmm. sounds like it goes up that chain that far. And I I think it's the job of the FBI to really, you know, the mortgage and fraud department to, to follow up on this. And I'm going to try to get it to somebody in that office. So what would you like to say? Um, uh, for anybody that's out there listening to our story, if you have any stories that are parallel to this right here, you can reach out and talk with us. Mm -hmm. um, you can also look on our webpage and follow up uh, through with us. And we're just honored that someone